Okay, now I am very lucky to be in the Balkans on a beautiful summer's day. It's actually in a very cold climate. All our Europeans in Australia always rave on about us living in tents in Australia. Well, we're going to have a closer look at clearly not a tent. Everything is concrete. The first floor, the roof obviously is not, but on the outside, we're completely encapsulated with this EPS or XPS. Everything's extremely solid here. Uh, reinforced concrete with this interesting brick material, which it looks like they actually cut out and it's got these thin little uh, hollow tunnels within it. Uh, as you can see, all the cabling has come straight through the brick uh, into a switchboard on the other side. We meticulously are foaming windows here, something that we don't do in Australia very well, but we're doing it here. Again, you don't really need to worry about the timbers bulking out, but we have to use a low expanding foam and I'm sure that's what they're using here because you can still bulk the window. All of these windows are tilt and turn. This is standard construction here, um, uh, which is pretty nice. In essence, what we've got here is a home that is encapsulated with insulation on the walls. We will cover and have a look at what they're gonna be doing for insulation on the ceiling. That will be extremely critical, especially where this area here where we're in can get quite cold. And, you know, I'm sure there's going to be quite a few viewers watching this who know a lot more about European construction than me. Uh, they've got electrical cables on the inside, not tucked in inside this brickwork. They're going to be pr putting a protrusion either of insulation or some sort of a, a render finish. I'm not sure. It'll be interesting to see what our viewers think and, and what they know will happen here with this detailing to conceal this electrical. Obviously, once this electrical has been rendered in or whatever it's you, you can't get access to it again so you want to make sure you get all your electrical in now and you don't have to add anything later from what i've seen th this is a very common feature within european construction especially where it's a cold climate at some stage they'll be fitting off a, a, a wood fire heater here or a wood fire heater and oven Let's have a look at what they've done here on the with the plumbing. It looks like the plumbing was put in after, or it was a bit of an afterthought. They're just digging it out of the wall and then they're spray foaming it afterwards. From an air tightness perspective, it looks like they'll get the majority of it on the outside where they've got the XPS and EPS. Uh, but we're just going to see how that transition finishes to the ceiling. So we'll have a look at that once we go upstairs. But this is really cool stuff and you know, clearly once all the finishes go in here, a lot of these wall surface areas will be quite airtight. The only issue though, potentially using EPS and XPS on the outside, I don't know how vapor permeable that product is, especially when we're in a colder climate. So let's zip upstairs now and see what the junction wall to roof looks like. So as you can see here, all of these internal walls are brick and concrete bracing. Let's have a look at this perimeter detail. So this is the roof. It looks like the roof has been installed with a wrap, followed with a, a rigid sort of material, which is timber. And then it leads straight into this EPS XBS material, which is rendered on the outside. So this is quite interesting because what I've noticed in a lot of European homes is they use a timber lining on their ceiling now, because this is a very cold climate, you'd want to make sure that the insulation consistency and the insulation thickness is sufficient for the, how cold it gets in this area. You probably want to go with more of a plaster or gyp rock ceiling as opposed to a timber ceiling, which is more than likely going to leak in between all of the joints or all of the laps of the timber ceiling. I'm imagining also that gyp rock will probably be cheaper as well. So it'd be interesting to hear someone who knows about construction in the Balkans, whether it's common to have a timber ceiling or a gyp rock ceiling to ensure that your insulation is gonna be 
abutted, directly abutted to the surface of the ceiling and that you have limited air leakage in this home at the ceiling point where you want your best air barrier and thermal barrier. So as you can see on the top floor here, <laughs> we've got meticulously spray foamed windows again. Uh, we've got more services. There's quite a few services at this point, so they've had to dig it into this hollow brick material, which obviously will all be concealed once the finishing plaster or rendered surface goes in. But yeah, this is amazing, the contrast of difference of Australian construction compared to uh, a Balkan or European type of construction where there's a significant amount of thermal mass in this building compared to Australia where we predominantly rely on just insulation to give us our comfort which is probably a lot more reactive whereas in a scenario like this where you've got so much thermal mass you've got a lot of embodied energy within the building that maintains a certain temperature for your comfort. Let's have a look at some of these other junctions. So here's another bathroom area. Again, they're spray foaming all of their services into these internal walls. Clearly, they're going to have to waterproof all these areas, but they've looks like they've just added in these services after the fact rather than embedding them into the actual slab. So to a certain degree, they're sort of working a little bit harder than they need to by the looks of it compared to what happens in Australia. Uh, the other thing that I could see will be very beneficial here is because of how much thermal mass there is and when you are heating this home you're going to be wanting to push a lot of the energy from a heating system down. Let's have a look on the outside to have a look at some of the detailing of the XPS or EPS foam that they're using around the perimeter. This is all EPS so it all feels very hollow. The detailing they've allowed for this extra thickness in the wall. Instead of allowing the insulation to just pass straight through here, they just insulated this brick wall here for this balcony anyway, so a little bit inefficient, but you could definitely find some efficiencies here, here of wrapping the insulation back around. So just down here also, they're gonna have some stone detailing. So the slab edge is exposed to the elements. Potentially a way to get around that is by actually insulating the slab inside with a thin layer of XPS or EPS with a floor lining potential solution. I guess our European viewers will be able to give us some uh, insights onto whether that is actually a solution that they use or whether they really try to absorb as much of the sun energy onto the thermal mass of the slab or whether they don't. And then the other thing that is critical, I guess, is just we tend to see a lot, and I think I mentioned it before, of like a timber ceiling. A gyp rock or a plaster ceiling is going to provide a much more airtight result. The only other important part of uh, this home is ensuring the thermal and airtight continuity of the air barrier on the ceiling and just making sure that the insulation is installed to as high of an R value as you can and that the plaster is continuing from the top of that wall or from even hopefully the XPS all the way across um, the, the top of this home. This is a really interesting view on how they build in Europe, way more solid than what we're building in Australia. But you know, when you've got all of this thermal mass, it also introduces some complications, uh, especially when you've got a lot of sun coming in where you can potentially suffer from overheating. The other thing that we're missing here is an ERV or a HRV, an actual ventilation system that can operate 24 by seven in a home like this that can get pretty airtight because of the type of construction that it is. And because everything internally generally is gonna be rendered. Render is a pretty airtight uh, material. Also, it'd be interesting to see, and I'm sure some of our viewers will be able to give us some insights on the vapor permeability of a wall system like this in a colder climate, how that, uh, what problems that might pose for managing condensation and potentially growing mold in homes like this.